What follows is an account by Paul Wallace, taken from his thought-provoking book, The Scars of Eden. This is no ordinary travel memoir. It will make you question everything you thought you knew about ancient myths and modern encounters. What begins as a family trip to Greece soon spirals into something far more mysterious, as Wallace uncovers tales of abduction, strange bodily markings, and long buried histories of hybrid beings. In The Scars of Eden, Wallace connects these ancient legends with contemporary experiences, urging us to reconsider what we've long dismissed as myth. Prepare yourself for a journey into the unknown. It is the era of terrorism. Around the world, bombings and hijackings are regularly punctuating the international conflicts of the day. My dad's work is in combating the impact of these troubles on our ability to travel the world. It is as a thank you for his work that our family is in Greece this summer. Exploring the unique treasures that this beautiful country has to offer, we are touring the Greek islands as the guest of the Greek shipping magnate, Andreas Potamnianos. And the amazing world of antiquity is a revelation for me. Crete is a beautiful island, and Knossos is its most significant megalithic site, dating from the Bronze Age. It is an inspiring feeling to stand in the place of an ancient civilization. In its heyday, Knossos was home to the Minoan people. Their culture thrived here between 3000 and 1000 BCE. The Minoans were an advanced maritime culture, whose cities were impressive multi-story environments with exquisite architecture, plumbing and air airflow management. Their advancement in technology catches my attention, so I put a question to our guide. Who exactly were the Minoans that they were so advanced? Where exactly did they come from? The answer comes in the form of a story I have never heard before. The Minoan culture appeared 5,000 years ago. The guide begins. They were the people of the great ruler Minos. Minos was a powerful man, although not really a man. He was a hybrid. The mother of Minos was a very beautiful woman. She was a daughter of Aegenor, the king of the Phoenicians. One day she was walking on the beach with her young friends. Her beauty drew the attention of the ruler of the gods, whose name was Zeus. He instantly decided that he must have her. Then, as if from nowhere, a beautiful and gentle bull appears on the beach beside her. The bull captivates the young woman with his animal beauty and gentle spirit. She strokes the animal and pets it. Something compels her to climb onto its back whereupon the bull gallops into the waves, taking her far from her home and family in Phoenicia all the way here to the island of Crete. It is here, on this very island, that the young girl discovers that her captor is not a bull, but a handsome god. You know what they say about Greek gods? They are very, very good looking. Zeus seduces the young woman, and when the time comes, she produces three sons, Rathamathis, Sarpizon, and Minos. Minos became the ruler of the Minoan culture. His mother's name was Europa. The entire continent of Europe is named after her. I had never heard this story before. So she was abducted? Yes, exactly. Europa was abducted by a handsome Greek god. And what happened next? Europa was an unmarried mother with three children, which could have been difficult. But fortunately for her, she was a very beautiful woman. She knew the king of Crete, and he loved her so much that he married her and was willing to adopt her three sons as his own. And so they all lived a happy life, all except for Europa's first husband, Zeus, who was killed in a battle. I was open mouthed. This was something I had never learned in school. The whole of Europe is named after an abductee, a young woman who was taken from the beach. I had always thought that Zeus was an ancient Greek almighty god. This legend paints a different picture. Zeus is flesh and blood. Something similar enough to a human being to hybridize with a human. Yes, he is powerful. He is able to manipulate the consciousness of Europa so as to cloak his true appearance. But he is not all powerful. He is not even immortal. In the end, someone kills him in a battle. This most famous of the gods. 
According to this version of events, was an advanced being who used his superior power to abduct and hybridize. The very name of Europe embodies a story of a prehistoric hybridization. My time in Greece has sown a seed of curiosity that will grow for many years to come. On our final evening in Athens, we settle into our cabins on our ship, the World Renaissance, then the flagship of the Iprotiki cruise line. It is as we change into the more formal attire for dinner that I notice something odd. Standing bare chested in front of the bathroom mirror, I see something that does not belong. Three raised lines on my belly, just below and to one side of the navel. The lines are about 8 centimeters long with a pinprick effect that looks uncannily like a scar of a multiple vaccination. What is it? I haven't had an inoculation in my belly. It's hardly something I would forget. Being a mere 20 years old, I take myself into the next cabin for my mum to provide a more expert diagnosis. It's probably just some kind of rash, she says offhandedly, but it doesn't look like a rash to me. I don't know what it is and how long has it been there. Whatever it is, I put my mind on other things and forget about it. Indeed, it will be many years before I even remember the thing that happened in 1985. Today I wonder more than ever how a testimony so widespread, carried by so many diverse cultures and traditions, could remain so unknown. In the west of the 21st century, when people like our friend Akua in Ghana claim to have experienced an abduction at the hands of something non-human, we startle as if we have never heard the like. As I journey through Greece, South Africa, Ghana to Kenya, Cuba, Brazil, the Caribbean, the Philippines, India, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, it's becoming clear to me that the like has in fact been told to us since time immemorial. We just haven't taken it seriously. Western culture today appears unable to take these kinds of reports seriously. What we now call close encounters of the fourth kind must be categorized as fable or fiction, metaphor or madness. The one thing we will not do with a person claiming a flesh and blood abduction experience is listen with respect. At least that is what I thought. Then one day in 2018, the revered journalist and national icon, Ita Butros, chair of Australia's ABC, spoke some words on national television that made my jaw drop. Thank you for joining me on this fascinating journey into the mysteries of our past and present as explored in The Scars of Eden by Paul Wallace. If you're intrigued by the connections between ancient myths, abduction accounts, and what they might mean for humanity, I highly recommend picking up a copy. Published by Sixth Books, it delves deeper into these enigmatic stories and will leave you questioning the boundaries between history and the unexplained. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.